All right, uh, what is up, guys? So uh, this video is going to be split up uh, into uh, two parts. Part two will be uh, uploaded uh, tomorrow. I don't want to uh, make uh, this video too long. And uh, I'm trying out uh, my uh, GoPro to record uh, this video. So let me know what you guys think about the uh, quality of the audio and the uh, video. I'm going to tell you guys uh, the real reason why there's uh, over 100 million uh, leftover women in China, okay? And uh, it's so easy to point the finger, right? Everybody wants to play the victim. You know, the man wants to uh, blame the woman. Woman wants to blame uh, the man. It's time for each and every one of us to, you know, look in the mirror and uh, have an honest moment of uh, self-reflection. A lot of people don't want to talk about this, but what's happening in China? And uh, it's the same thing in the United States and Canada, in many countries in Europe. The real reason why so many people don't want to have children, even though, let's say the lucky ones, let's say the ones that has made it to the top 10, top 5% of income earners, a lot of people uh, don't want to have children. It's because uh, they 100% believe that, uh, you know, our world is going to shit and uh, they don't want to bring any children into uh, this insane world because uh, the previous generation, they have made everything worse. It's extremely important for you guys to listen to this, okay? Listen, throughout uh, the history of a human civilization, the next generation must surpass the previous, okay? If you don't surpass the previous generation, do you know what that means? The inevitable is that, uh, you know, the next generation will become extinct. This always has been the number one rule throughout uh, every single human civilization. We must improve, we must advance, and we must uh, move forward. We cannot uh, be moving backwards. Look at uh, what's happened uh, to uh, this uh, generation, okay? In our schools now, we're teaching young people that uh, men can menstruate. We're teaching uh, young kids that uh, women have penises. We're teaching kids that it is okay uh, for a 13-year-old boy. You know, if you feel like uh, you're confused about your body, it is okay to cut your penis off. We're teaching uh, young 12-year-old girls that uh, it is okay if you feel like you're trapped in the wrong body. It is okay for you to get your uterus removed and to get a double mastectomy, okay? To everybody that's a boomer, you know, the silent generation, Gen X, you say that, oh, look at uh, this generation, what a joke uh, you guys have become. No, you guys raised this generation. You guys inherited the greatest uh, wealth transfer in the history of humanity, both in the East and the West, yet uh, you have completely destroyed this world. You have F-U-C-K'd our world into a coma. I'll give you an example. Way, way, way back in the day, up until the 1980s in China, it was mandatory. Every single Chinese woman must be a virgin on her wedding day. It's the exact same thing in the West, right? This is inevitably the worst time in history to be a man. Now, and uh, I've brought up this topic before, you know, to all the ladies, right? And, you know, maybe some guys are okay with your previous uh, body count. They're okay with your past. What's gonna happen, you know, when you get married, a couple bachelors show up. They say, dude, I used to f your wife every single day. No children throughout the history of humanity has dealt with uh, this level of humiliation. Okay, I mentioned this uh, every single day growing up. I had to put up with that every single day. Someone will come up to me. Oh, dude, you know, I heard that the mechanic Jerry f your mom last night. Oh, dude, my uncle used to f your mom every single day after uh, she divorced your dad. Divorce and female sexual promiscuity has never ever been okay in any civilization throughout history and uh, look at uh, what the modern men have to put up with now for my dad and my mom they didn't have to pay for any of their houses in china it was given to them by the chinese communist party my dad he also had a pickup he had a cell phone that was all given to him when my dad and my mom when they chose to go back to school they only had to go back to school for two years to get a credential in order to get a solid paying a white collar job they had a dormitory that was provided for them that uh, they could stay in for free. They also had a meal plan and uh, every single meal was paid for by the Chinese Communist Party. However, that is no longer possible today. Think about uh, what's happening in the West, right? And uh, all the previous generations, all the Gen X, all the boomers, they keep saying that, oh, look at uh, this generation. You're all a bunch of bums. You're a bunch of losers, okay? Back in the day, you know, when I was 25 years old, okay, I was already married with two children. I already owned a home. I had a family van, and I also had a fishing boat. I also had my own sports car. Okay, here's the thing. I've uh, told you guys before, so in 2002, my dad, he sold his house in China. He sold uh, his pickup. Both of these were given to him by the uh, energy company that uh, he worked for. He did not have to pay for them. So the cash he got uh, from selling his home in China, also selling his car, that was enough to buy a home for cash in Canada for $160,000 Canadian. 
that's $120,000 US. And that was back in 2005. That's really not that long ago. Just look at how much the housing market has crashed in Canada. It has become impossible to own a home unless you already have one previously and then it's easy for you to sell one and buy a new one. Or if you have a super rich millionaire parents that can help you. But uh, with uh, those exceptions, it has become 100% uh, uh, impossible for youths today. Someone that I used to work with uh, during my co-op. So I, I used to go to a Georgian college. I was actually in the heating, refrigeration, and air conditioning program. So in order to graduate, I had to do a four-month co-op. And uh, I worked at uh, this HVAC company. One of the guys uh, I worked with, uh, he told me that uh, you know he bought his house in Canada in 2006. 2006, that's less than 20 years ago. This is So this is a three-bedroom, fully furnished house with a garage and a finished basement. He bought his house in 2006 for $140,000 Canadian or $105,000 US, okay? By the way, back in 2006, Canada still allowed only a 5% down payment on houses. Back in those days, uh, people in Canada, if you want to purchase a home, a 40-year mortgage was still allowed, okay? So his down payment for his house was $7,000 Canadian or $5,200 US. He told me that uh, he didn't even have to save up for a down payment. He simply just swiped his credit card. He took out uh, $7,000 Canadian from his credit card and uh, that was his 5% uh, down payment. He didn't need a guarantor or co-signer or anything. Listen to this. His monthly mortgage payment is $290 Canadian a month. That is roughly $208 US per month. That was back in 2006. By the way, he's still paying that exact same amount almost uh, 20 years later because even with the inflation, his mortgage rate uh, is fixed in its place. It does not go up. Do you guys not realize how crazy that sounds? Every single person, they had life on the easy mode in the previous generation. And uh, on top of this, right, let, let's talk about uh, dating and marriage, okay? So let's take uh, my uh, maternal grandfather, for example. So he was pretty much a bump, okay? He never made much money. And uh, early on in his life, he caught some kind of a serious disease. It could be polio, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, he could never walk properly. He, he has always had to use a cane, even since he was 20s. So this guy, he's five foot four, completely broke, no money. He smokes, he drinks, he walks with a limp. Yet uh, he got to marry my grandmother when she was an 18-year-old virgin. She gave birth uh, to five children in total. Three of them uh, made it to adulthood. Of course, I mean, they had uh, many disagreements in their life. And obviously, they had to work out uh, through their rough patches. But uh, I asked them, okay, did divorce uh, ever come to mind for you guys? And uh, my grandmother and my grandfather, they always said no. Because uh, that was always taught to them uh, since day one. That uh, the most uh, important thing to you in uh, Confucius ideology in China was that uh, the nuclear family was king. That was always number one. And uh, the greatest sin you can ever commit in your lifetime is breaking apart the nuclear family. And uh, the greatest uh, sin you can commit in life is breaking your marriage vows. And uh, the greatest uh, sin a Chinese woman can commit is to sleep with more than one man in her lifetime. Because they were always taught to be remain faithful to one man for their entire lifetimes. However, uh, Chinese uh, schools, uh, they stopped teaching these ideologies. Because back in the day, uh, this system worked. China had uh, virtually no divorces. And uh, even through the, the arranged marriages, you think that, uh, oh, these Chinese women, they were being abused. They were not happy, right? So I, I've talked to thousands and thousands of these older Chinese grannies. Almost every single one of them. Yes, they were arranged to be married at 17, 18, 19, okay? Almost every single one of them was happy. And the look at what has happened to modern women, okay? You have the freedom, you have the choices to choose any man you want in this world. But uh, every single woman, they're always unhappy when they're married. They're unhappy when they're in a relationship. They're not happy when they're divorced. They're unhappy when they're single. They're unhappy at work. They're not happy when they're not at work. Look at what society has done to modern women. We've turned all of our women into a bunch of feminists that absolutely hates men. They say we need to crush the patriarchy. They say we need to destroy everything in our society. They're turning into a blue and green haired lesbians, okay? They have a skulls tattooed onto their forehead. They're getting nose piercings and tongue piercings. Some college students in Canada and the US will reach a body count of over 100 men before they even graduate the university. What has happened to our world? How could you guys do this to us, okay? I'm talking about people like my mom and my dad. 
How could you guys uh, do this uh, to this generation? You guys had your education paid for. You had your houses paid for. You had your health care paid for, right? You had your meal plan paid for. Everything you had in life was given to you on a silver spoon. Back in your generation, every single woman was feminine. Every single woman was a virgin. Every single woman was based. Every single woman learned to cook, learned to clean. Every single woman learned how to make her man happy, how to become her man's emotional support. If you choose to break your marriage vows, there's going to be severe consequences, okay? Do you guys want to know why uh, these uh, young Chinese people, they're so broke? I mentioned before, so many uh, these uh, young Chinese men, they're laying flat at their homes, right? They say there's no point of going to work, okay? What's the point? I'll never be able to make enough money to get a girlfriend or get a wife. So why bother uh, trying? The two people out there saying that, uh, okay, with China's one-child policy, right? That means that you have four grandparents, you have two parents and one child. That means that, that there's going to be a lot of generational wealth, right? So shouldn't uh, this generation of Chinese youths uh, be super loaded? Ah, see, this is where you're wrong. This is why I'm so against you know, tearing apart the nuclear family and constantly uh, breaking your marriage vows. See, perhaps, you know, if uh, the nuclear family still exists in China today, perhaps uh, if the wars never became a rampant epidemic in China. Okay, by the way, it is a rampant epidemic. Uh, so in 2019, China's divorce rate officially eclipsed uh, 50%. Okay, there were 4.3 million divorces in China. Out of the 4.3 million divorces, 3.2 million was filed by Chinese women. And that is a fact. So I will tell you guys uh, something extremely destructive. Okay, there are laws, there are policies that uh, you know government officials can put in place to improve the situation. I simply don't understand why the elites are not doing this. For example, I mentioned before, in, in Canada, prior to 1969, before Canada allowed no-fault divorce, the divorce rate in Canada was roughly only 10%. It was in 1969, Canada allowed no-fault divorce, that Canada's divorce rate jumped up by 500%, literally within two years. Right to right now, it is roughly a 50% and it has stayed at 50% for the next 30, 40, 50 years. I'll tell you guys uh, how destructive uh, so no fault divorce is, okay? Not just no fault divorce, I'm talking about no fault contested divorce. Ladies, if you walk into a marriage, okay, where you bring absolutely nothing, okay, your man, he paid for the wedding, he paid for your wedding ring, he paid for the honeymoon, okay, he's the one who bought the house, he's the breadwinner, he's the one that bought the family van, he's the one that bought the Mercedes, okay, if you say you're not happy, okay, and if you want a no-fault divorce, I have no problem with that. You brought nothing to the marriage, you leave with nothing. Okay, the problem is that I see all these people, for example, Kaka's ex-wife, they say, oh, I just don't love my husband anymore. He's too perfect for me. I'm just not happy anymore. I'm just not feeling it. There's no spark. Why do these women, okay, who bring absolutely nothing to the marriage, why do they always get to walk out with millions and millions and millions of dollars in assets? Okay, where's the fairness and equality in that? Despite, uh, you know, my mom's success, despite the success uh, of my aunts in China, despite the success uh, my dad used to have and his brothers, okay, all my uncles, look, my generation literally have absolutely nothing to inherit. I'll give you an example. So let's say a man, he, he is the breadwinner in, in this marriage, right? Let's say uh, that was his house that he bought. That was his, his car that he bought into the marriage, right? And uh, let's say the house he has in China is worth, let's say, 500000 Let's just uh, have an even number to make the math easier. And let's say he gets married to his wife. And a couple years down the road, uh, his wife, this Chinese woman, says that, you know what? I am just not happy. I cannot do it. I want a no-fault divorce. However, this Chinese woman brought nothing to the marriage, so she cannot come to an agreement with her uh, ex-husband. But so she says that I want a contested divorce. This is the issue, okay? So you have one house where right? everybody in the family is living under one roof. How do you uh, split the house in a contested divorce? So, so in this case, both sides uh, of the uh, family, they have to both hire divorce attorneys. So usually what ends up happening is that the, the Chinese Communist Party will come in and say that, okay, you cannot come into, into, a, into a agreement with your divorce, right? Uh, so the government, we're going to take away uh, your house. It is our property now, and uh, we will give you evaluation. So your house, we'll say that is worth uh, 500000 And uh, so each of you will get uh, $250,000 in that divorce. So your house, that is generational wealth and asset, that's literally gone overnight due to a woman's rash decision to file for a no-fault contested divorce. Well, you can say that at least, okay, so the husband and the wife still gets 250000 right? No. The husband and the wife gets nothing, okay? How much do you think a lawyer's cost? 
Well, you think you can hire uh, these lawyers for $20 an hour, $25, $30? These divorce attorneys in China and the West, they're literally running a mafia. They're like the freaking Yakuza and the Triads, okay? That $250,000, that never gets to the ex-husband. That never gets to the ex-wife, okay? All of that money goes to payment for the uh, divorce attorneys. So in a no-fault contested divorce, both sides of the divorcees, they end up with absolutely nothing. Not only do you lose your house, not only do you lose your car, in some cases, okay, both sides uh, of the family end up uh, going to bankruptcy and uh, they actually have to go into debt. They have to use credit card. They have to use a uh, line of credit in order to pay off the fees for the family court, in order to pay off the fees for the divorce attorneys. That is how destructive a no-fault uncontested divorce is. Do you guys not see what's happening? So I'm going to end uh, part one of this video with this message. Okay. When uh, the previous generation has done everything they can to make our world a better place, then the next generation will have everything to be grateful for their previous generation. We should be thanking them for all of their accomplishments and all of their hard works. I'm talking about uh, the generation of the World War II veterans, the ones that, that were on the beaches in Normandy, the ones that fought against real and actual fascism, and uh, these people won. They won against uh, Mussolini. They won against the uh, Hirohito. They won against uh, Nazi Germany. These people were the real heroes and uh, our world was a better place thanks to these people. However, when the previous generation has literally made this world a living nightmare, where over 50% of the population are living paycheck to paycheck, where the average income can't even afford you a simple studio or bachelor's apartment in the, any major US or Canadian city where none of the young couples can afford to buy a home or raise children in Canada. A society where our youths are constantly uh, being indoctrinated, we're constantly being told to play the victim, we're being told that uh, man can menstruate, man can give birth, woman can ejaculate, woman can have testicles. This is the state of our society in 2024. When the previous generation has made everything worse for you, when all of the generational wealth has been lost through the breakup of the nuclear family, through no fault and contested divorces, then this young generation has every single reason to absolutely hate and bash and blame the previous generation because it is the previous generation that started all of this. We did not start third wave feminism. We did not start the radical uh, political polarization of our society. We did not start hookup culture. We did not start the 50% divorce rate. This video will be continued tomorrow afternoon.